We're in uh, Psalm 16, <clears throat> and we've been really looking at this name that's used for God, um, Adonai, and um, uh, and the meaning of it, and how it's really a major part of First uh, Peter, though I have not yet gone there to compare, and this would be a good little search for some of you if you'd like to do this little search. Not, there's no credit you'll get for it except for just learning this. But it would be interesting <clears throat> to look up all of the scriptures in First Peter that are used from the Old Testament, and then see if any of those scriptures that are being used in the Old Testament use the name. Adonai. I think that'd be a really nice little search. And it would also help us to, again, bridge the gap with, with First Peter. So some of you, somebody, just take that on. And even a couple of somebodies wouldn't, wouldn't hurt us. Um, <clears throat> which uh, reminds me, I said something last week or the week before. <clears throat> um, but it's been some time back since I made this statement, and that was that Adonai is usually used for God, and Adon, A-D-O-N, is usually used for some sort of a <clears throat> leader or master or whatever person, uh, but it's usually um, a, a human being, Adon, and then a add in the A-I at the end of it, and you've got artificial intelligence. I mean, you've got Adonai. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> um, but we, we showed this a couple of weeks ago that Psalm 8, um, in this phrase, O Lord, our Lord, the O Lord first is Jehovah, and then our Lord there is Adon. So there's one example th that I've found where that is actually used for God. Uh, and I haven't found another one yet, but we still have people searching and, and looking and seeking the Lord over this. And it's, uh, it's just kind of got us interested in a, in a big way uh, in relationship to what the Lord is trying to uh, communicate uh, in relationship to who he is in that, using that name. So, what we've been doing, too, is going through the Psalms, and if you've missed any of the classes since we've been going through the Psalms, they have they really, really have some amazing information, and showing the in-working of God, the way that the, the Trinity flows and works together, and something of that, how they, they flowed together, relates to what God wanted out of us in spirit um, when he said, when Elohim said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. So, um, so we got into chapter, we got into Psalm 16 and we moved along pretty well because there's a lot of information in here, but let's read um, Psalm 16, verse 1 through 7. I think that's going to be adequate, but we'll see. This is uh, the Lord speaking. <clears throat> Preserve me, this is the crucified, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. And that's one of the things we, <clears throat> before we started this study of Adonai and just thought in terms of God, like the Christian God, we would, we would just say, oh, oh Lord, and you know, we'd, we'd either address that to Jesus or to the Father or whatever, whoever, basically, oh God, oh God is kind of what we mean. Oh God, uh, preserve me if we, if we use that phrase. <clears throat> Help me, um, for in thee do I put my trust, because Lord, I'm trusting you. So it was sort of a generic name, generic understanding, but since we've discovered the term, the name Adonai, we have realized that 
not in every situation, that, but there is a specific situation of the sufferings of Christ where he, uh, where one of the Trinity or two of them, maybe even three in our case, so I don't know, are our Adonai. And that doesn't just mean you're the master or you're the Lord or you're the big boss. It means that you have been specifically given to those who are going through the sufferings of Christ, not just any sufferings, not just any problems, but specifically in this area. And you are sort of a guardian, caretaker, keeper, um, uh, and punisher of the, of the evildoers who are doing, bringing about that, those sufferings. So, um, so that's where we're getting this now. Um, I'm putting my trust in you. O oh, my soul, thou hast said to the Lord, thou art my Adonai. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all delight, all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another god. Their drink offerings of blood shall I not offer uh, nor take for their names, uh, for their lips. And I just remembered that there is another portion after verse 7 that we were looking at, verse 8. So we're going to jump down to verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruptions. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence, O Adonai, as it is, it is fullness of joy at thy right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. Okay, so we sort of got into that, um, and and we did make the statement that this psalm is Christ crucified, uh, and when he's going through the trials, and when he's on the cross, and we proved a bunch of that out, but we want to take it further. <clears throat> so let's go back. What we did was we found that many of the, the verses of Psalm 16 are quoted by Peter in Acts 2. And it's quoted about Jesus being crucified. And so we'll pick it up there. <clears throat> um, let me just read this a little bit. Peter had just quoted verses 17 through 18 from Psalm 16. So this is where we left off last class. Um, which pertain to Elohim pouring out his spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So you see this, you see this um, fulfillment, what we saw as the fulfillment of Joel saying, you know, I, you know he, he, he quotes Joel and he's also quoting this psalm. Um, <clears throat> uh, in Psalm 16, Jesus was the weakened servant servant but in verses 17 and 18 another member of Elohim or the Trinity was sent to testify of him now let's pick up at Peter okay this is Acts uh, chapter 2 go to Acts 2 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him. Okay, so there's these two names, for those of you who have been following this, that we've really honed in on, Adonai and Elohim. And Elohim is is the Trinity, is the Godhead, is the three in one. And from among one of those, for example, the example that we used is that um, if, um, so the, the Trinity is here and uh, the, 
you know, they're all three there. But when Jesus came down to the earth and went through the cross and went through the sufferings of Christ, that left two, as it were, and you really see this in Psalm 2, majorly, okay? Then there's the Father and the Holy Spirit, and um, ultimately in Psalm 2, we saw that it was the Spirit that was his uh, Adonai, or the one that he prayed to, the one that he knew would ultimately change this, fix this thing. He would be raised from the dead and on and on. So, excuse me while I have a drink of this stuff. Okay, so um, uh, in verse 22, you men of Israel hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, <clears throat> among you with miracles and signs which God did by him. That's so Elohim that God did by him. Okay, God approved him, but God did those things by him uh, in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinant counsel of the foreknowledge of God. So the determinant counsel is the three in one, okay? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I know that's not legible. <clears throat> but uh, the determinant counsel of God was the, th the three of them. In other words, they all came to agreement of the cross being the answer instead of just coming down in power and wiping everybody out that ever did wrong and then blessing the people that you like. Um, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Okay. Well, they did that by wicked hands, but Jesus laid down his life. He didn't let them murder him. He was a sacrifice. He, was, he willingly uh, embraced weakness, which we see in uh, Philippians 2. He willingly, I, I call it willing weakness. It is a weakness that though he could have called 10,000 angels, he became that. And listen to this part. Once you, if, if you enter into the sufferings of Christ that first Peter talks about, if you enter into that, <clears throat> Uh, even though you might have a way of escape, you have somebody that can get you out of it, or you have some little device you can do to show up the bad guy and get out of it or whatever. If you're going to use your own methods, your own hand, your own strength to get out of it, then Adonai is out. He's not going to support that because that's not how this works. Okay, But Jesus, having ability to call 10,000 angels, didn't do it, became willing weak, had willing weakness, um, and chose to be a sacrifice for us, even for the ones who did this to him, and went through that in that spirit, then Adonai will deal with the evildoers that put him through that and will exalt the one who went through that in a right spirit by Christ as your life. If, if it's us, it's, it's not us. It's by Christ who is our life, who lays down their life even for the undeserving, even for the wicked, even for, you know, the just for the unjust is the way, uh, one of the many ways that Peter puts it in 1 Peter, you know, he, he gave himself the just, there's your sacrifice, for the unjust that he might bring them to God. His purpose, your purpose, your spirit in all of that is not to get back at the people. It is to glorify the Father by this nature of Jesus, and it is to uh, if possible, because everyone has free will, 
to bring those to God. The, Jesus suffered the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So what's happening here is in this this class is the, is that we're like a <clears throat> we're like a snowball going down rolling down the hill and we're gathering up momentum and we're gathering up more we're getting we're getting more ideas more um, <clears throat> insights into this spirit so that when we go through things we go through it by Christ crucified, or we go through it, uh, another term, we go through it by the Lamb, or by the Lamb Spirit, however you want to put it. But it is Him nonetheless. And we, but to truly flow with that, you have to understand God. You have to understand Elohim is the Trinity, is three in one. And you have to understand that anyone within that, when they give themselves, then one of them or more is going to be that person's Adonai, meaning you're not alone in that trial. You know, I mean, they said to Jesus, you know, da da da, da and he said, I'm not alone. The Father's with me always. Um, and, and so in that trial, we always freak out. You know, we're, now we're talking about the corridor for those who remember that. When you're in that trial, when you're in that corridor, we're freaking out going, well, you know, nobody's with me. Everybody's turned against me. And, you know, David kind of used that language several times. But then, and we'll see some of those because we're going to go through not all, every psalm, but some of them. And David would really freak out. I mean, Psalm 35 is a perfect example of that. <clears throat> But then he get, he starts gathering momentum. And then he starts, you know, uh, as I said, when you get into that corridor of the sufferings of Christ, sometimes you're freaking out at first. And then you begin to gain the spirit of Christ in it. And you instead of getting back at those people that are, because we always do that. We, we, we just see those people as just mean people. And I'm a good person. And so they deserve to be punished and, and to, you know, all this bad stuff that we think about them. But see, Jesus didn't go. The sufferings of Christ that we're supposed to go through, Jesus didn't go through that cursing everybody. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And he's hanging on a cross and about to die. But he's dying the right kind of death. And we don't usually want to suffer or die any kind of a death because of our flesh and because of our soul. And that's one reason why, um, uh, what is it, Psalm 8 starts off with the soul. We have soul problems and we see the things unfair and we see things as, as, uh, as just the devil or just bad people. And we're, we're just lost. Our soul is lost to the reality of oneness with Christ as life who can who can be that that uh, that willing sacrifice in us and like I said you know I mean well I won't I won't go any further into that so in verse 23 him being delivered by the let's see verse 24 whom God, and I put in parenthesis, whom God, as Jesus is Adonai, hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden by it. Okay. So, um, so let me just read this. Again, we see the Elohim exchange involving one or more of the Godhead functioning as the Adonai, meaning the one who, whom you call out to. And that's, that's what we're seeing over and over in, in these scriptures, is that the one that they call out to when they are in uh, not just unjust sufferings, but sufferings that are intended to be 
as the sufferings of Christ and being one with him in that spirit. And, um, and we're, we're just seeing that, that uh, situation where Adonai is always the name when we get to the place where, you know, you're really calling out for help or, or you tr you're saying, I trust in you. I, tr I mean, I'm going through this, but I trust in you. It's usually Adonai. In fact, it's always Adonai if the sufferings are in that category. Now, I say it always is. I don't know every example in the Bible, so I don't know. And I'm finding, you know, I'm, I'm regularly picking out at least one thing and going, whoops, I was wrong about that. So don't, don't trust me. Search the scriptures for in that, you know. Jesus said, for in them you think you have eternal life, and there they which testify of me. <clears throat> All right. Um, so again, we see the Elohim exchange involving one or more of the Godhead functioning as the Adonai. Uh, these verses mention Jesus being approved by God. Why? Because he became weak. And let it come, let whatever came, came from his Adonai, whom God did through whom the Father did or whom God did through him. Uh, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. So that's Jesus and then another member of Elohim. Um, verse 24, whom God hath raised up. Uh, there's another one here, which God, uh, let's say, among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him. See, you don't open your mouth unless it's the Lord speaking. You don't um, work your plans unless it's God. Jesus was the Son of God, and he had all power just like the Father and the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said, the works I do are not my own. They're the Father's. He's my Adonai. I don't claim them. I don't claim them. I am in willing weakness. And when I'm there, this is almost as if you can hear David saying that or anyone else. And when I'm there, I can trust that my Adonai is going to come through in all these different ways while I don't have to put my hands to it or I don't have to justify myself to others. I can rest in, in the Lord's hand in all these things. Okay, so Jesus being approved of God, why? Because he became weak, willing weakness, and let it come from his Adonai. Supernatural things God did, but did it by him because Jesus embraced willing weakness. In other words, it was not Jesus doing it. Jesus being delivered up by the determinate counsel of God, evildoers. This is all First Peter. God raising him up from the death that the determinate counsel of God had ordered, not evil men. All right, so... Uh, if we could just see that and embrace it, then we would, we would be in that situation and we wouldn't have to evaluate how wrong the evildoers are that are doing this or, you know, they're, they're trying to put me to death or they're this and that. And we can know that the, if there's a death, and I'm not necessarily talking about physical death, but if there is a death or sufferings, it came by the determinant counsel of God. Let me read that one again. <clears throat> God raising him up from the death that the determinant counsel decided. This raising up was done by an Adonai. Adonai. So, I, you know, we're still early in the Psalms portion of this. But what we're going to see over and over is this pattern, but in different forms so that we can, we can not just hear the, the doctrine of it, 
but we can see the flow of how they operate. And this, this is given both. This is actually given us both. Um, so uh, now we come to verses in Peter quoted from Psalm 16. Starting in verse 25, Peter will begin to explain the psalmist words in light of Christ crucified. Okay. Uh, so here comes um, Acts 2. For David, in this verse 25, for David speaketh concerning him, and he's talking about the Lord. He's, David here is talking about Jesus uh, in crucifixion and in the sufferings. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. So this is Jesus like looking at his Adonai, who is either his father or his spirit, if you will, the Holy Spirit. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I shall not be moved. You see this? Do you see this security? Do you see that you can be going through the most horrible things? And if you understand the relationship of these, uh, the, the, that, that these names are meant to signify, then you can flow with God in it. But if you don't, you are on your own with your own understanding of what's going on and and trust me if you're left to your own devices you're going to use the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and you're going to just say well i'm good and they're evil and this is bad and we need to you know call call the police or something <laughs> you know we need to do something to get back because this is so, so unjust so unfair that this is going on and we and then usually we end up starting to, to justify back and to use our tongue against them to other people to try to get people on our side. And before it's over, they are evildoers and you're an evildoer because you're responding the same way they are. They are trying to get you. You're trying to get them. They're trying to say they're right. You're trying to say you're right. Now, compare that to Jesus. Compare that to Jesus when, um, when he's going through all that he's going through, when he's being slapped, when he's being mocked, when he's, you know, all the things that are happening in the trial. All right, so um, verse 26, Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Okay, so he's going to go into death. But his flesh shall rest in hope. His flesh is not going to be going, don't let this happen. This is wrong. No, his flesh is going to rest with, with God in the hope that there is an Adonai who understands what their spirit is and what your spirit is. And like Jesus, and like Jesus in you, he's going to take you through the same thing so that you can be conformed to, to the lamb that's, that's the slaughtered lamb that sits on the throne or the slaughtered lamb that has been exalted above everything else. Because he, not because he defeated everybody. Because in that sense, he didn't, he didn't defeat uh, Herod. He didn't defeat Pontius Pilate. He didn't defeat the soldier that slapped him. He didn't de defeat the soldier that shoved a spear in his side. None of those had any repercussions per se against them by Jesus at all after his resurrection. It wasn't his great defeat of anything why God exalted him to the highest place. It was because, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery or a thing to be grasped after, to be equal, I've got to be equal with God and use my power, but became as a, as a, ma as a man, and then became, that man became a servant, and that servant become, became looked at as a criminal, and then he was put to death. 
all of that based on their view of how wrong Jesus was. But see, this isn't about wrong or right. This isn't even about you and them, the evildoers. This is about you and God and the life that is in you. Will you let the Lamb... Read First Peter. This is all First Peter. Will you let His Spirit, will you let that nature... When they slap you, you turn the other cheek. When they uh, make you go one mile, you go a, a next mile. And you'll do it to the glory of God by the Spirit that glorifies God. And, you know, so as long as you're making this between you, poor you, not, not, not the one that's joined in oneness with Jesus, the Lamb, but as long as you make this poor you, Poor me, I'm a victim. People are picking on me. This is just bad. And, and there's the people. And you make it between poor you and evil them. And then, and then you start going into self-pity or self-righteousness. None of that is what he's calling for. You've forgotten that this really is between you and the life in you and you and the life in you and the Father. And reaching to the highest place. It looks like the very lowest place, but it's the very highest place where it honors the nature and the, the spirit that God wanted us to be conformed unto. All right, so... Um, verse 27, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Okay? Um, so he's, he is assured. He is assured that there will be, we, we can call it a resurrection. We can call it an, an exaltation. Uh, it was an exaltation. It was an exaltation to to, the, to a throne whereby every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That's right. That's the, that's the resurrection of, of Philippians 2 when he says Jesus became low and he became this and he became man and then he became obedient unto death. Wherefore, or because of this progression done in a right spirit, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is, in other words, that's the one, that slaughtered lamb on the throne, that's the one that God has made Lord above everything else. Well, we just think resurrection is, oh, I prayed a prayer and I got saved and I, therefore I'm just going to go to heaven. It's a, that simple. Thank God I prayed that little prayer. But what if, what if God is after his son out of us? What if he wants his son in the manner of his selflessness and he wants that to manifest through us and that he's not just wanting warm bodies in heaven. He's wanting that which is akin to their heart and their spirit and their mind and their ways. What if? Okay, so verse 28, uh, Thou hast made, made known to me the ways of life. And there it is. Okay. When you get into the corridor or the sufferings of Christ, when you get into that situation, you either need to enter it already knowing the ways of life, which is the ways of his life, the ways that he lived his life in those situations. We either need to know that before we enter into it and then enter into it with knowledge and peace and everything else, or we need to enter into it, see 
our incredible selfless, selfishness, selfishness and ugliness as we rail back and as we accuse and as we cover up and lie and as we do all these things because we're starting to look bad and we don't want to look bad. And then, in the middle of that, break down and just go, oh my God, I am, I am almost worse than the evildoer. And I don't want to be that. I want your life and your spirit and your way, the way of life. I, I, want, I want you to, to uh, make known to me the ways of life while I'm in the midst of this. Let me, allow me to bless those that curse me instead of curse to do what they're doing. Let me, allow me to glorify you, Father, with this Son, this Son, this Lamb Son. Um, and, you know, then you get in there and then your Adonai starts to help, starts to move, because he wants that. If the Adonai is the Spirit, <clears throat> then he gets in there involved it's going to be a different ball game. But as long as you're railing and ranting and, you know, upset about this and that's wrong and everything's wrong and life's horrible and all of this is just not right and why are you allowing this or whatever, you know, whatever direction we take it, um, uh, there is no functioning at all. And we will just sink down deeper into the mire. The dog shall be returned to his vomit. I think that's Peter, isn't it? First Peter. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> um, so David and Peter agree that Psalm 16 is about Christ crucified. So now we go back to uh, verse 1 of Psalm 16, preserve me, O, o God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Adonai. Man, when your soul finally gets, stops whining and crying and kicking and, and rebelling and showing, you know, being, being a, a, a little brat, uh, when it's it starts lining up in this way. Oh, my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Adonai. That's what, this is the right translation of this. My goodness extendeth not to thee, because he's seen what's wrong, but he also is seeing what's right. Because, because uh, not just God came to his rescue, not just he, you pray to Jesus or you pray in Jesus' name and that'll work or any of that stuff. It is not some sort of Christian magic or whatever, however you want to word that. It is a specific knowing of God in a specific way and knowing what he wants and what image he wants out of us. That he put you in there in the first place. The determinant counsel of God put you in, in one of those situations. Wow. Man, oh man. Where does the time go? Um, well, I'm going to stop here because I know that we... We need to not, I need to not waterboard you. I'm not trying to waterboard you. And here's the, here's the hope and the trust that I have. I believe that the Lord started sharing all of this with us, not just me, with us. I believe this was, this was ordered. It was ordered of the Lord. And, um, and it was, and it, this understanding of Adonai came about with me totally not understanding the name or the thing behind it at all and making a, 
a mistake. Um, same with Abraham, chapter Genesis, chapter 15 and chapter 17, where Adonai is used and he just uses it wrong. He just uses God. He just uses him to get what he wants. Well, why don't you do this? And what are, you know, I'm serving you and you're not coming through and all this. Oh, God. But in chapter 18, verse 3, he, he gets it gets it and that swung us into this search so this isn't just you know I mean I, I believe that the Lord has shown me that um, that these are seeds and whether our minds going well, I wasn't in the first classes or I didn't have a word don't don't go there don't talk about what you don't know Trust your Adam. <laughs> Trust the Lord and say, Lord, you can, you can make this explode in my spirit right now. You can take seeds of Christ crucified and the Lamb and everything else that I've ever heard and bring it all together and just explode that in my being right now or tomorrow or the next day. So, Father, I water these seeds. You know, I pour the water of the Word on them. I search the Scriptures. I don't just hope that you're just going to show me because I'm in a class and I got to, you know, I'll get it because I'm in a class. Trust me, that's not going to happen. But you water that Word. You water those seeds and you, and you pray over it and, you know, and you hold it before the Lord. And, and even if you think, well, I don't get this and therefore it's, it sounds stupid to me. Well, just say, Lord, if this is stupid, tell me. But if this is something so deep in your heart that you would want us to know so that Christ could come out of us instead of our ugliness, then please reveal the spirit of Adonai that you've set up for those who go through these sufferings. Is that okay? <laughs> Amen. All right, then let's do that. Let's pray. Father, blessed, blessed, blessed be your name. As you have sent the Holy Spirit to us to teach us Christ. And there's all three of you. There is Elohim. Father, you sent the Holy Spirit to teach us Christ. There is a flow and an order. There is a spirit of approach. There is a lowly place that should be taken before Adonai that Abraham didn't know and really violated, not, not sin, but violated you. But then he got it. And Father, I just pray that I just pray the Holy Spirit's prayer request that he could have wings to fly, that, that with his wings he could fly instead of walk. He could fly bringing forth Christ, not just in ways that benefit our atonement or benefit us, but in ways that reveal you, Father, and you, Jesus, and you, Holy Spirit. That we would not be as strangers and foreigners to you. Peak our interest, stir our excitement, Stir us enough that we'll, as many have been doing, dig into the scriptures and say, Father, not ink on white paper, but spirit and life, as Jesus called it, when he said, my words are spirit and life. Not ink on white paper, but spirit and life. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.